I don't think it's wrong for them to tell their intentions, but it's just like you don't have to be so like, like yeah. Why you gotta be so rude? Welcome back or welcome to our channel with the Black Wells. <laughs> we are all about faith, family, and fun. Each week we drop a new video on you guys. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe, bang that notification bell. As well, we have our own little section called Beauties and Bonnets. Where we do mother daughter chit chats, we talk, we recap shows, and all of that stuff. So, again, if that sounds like something you're interested in, why not hit the subscribe button and bang that bell? Let's start off with um, the day started with them like chit chatting in their rooms or at the hotel. We weren't really paying 100% attention, but we think they were talking about like the past few days and what gaining their power or whatever, making it their journey. It's supposed to be their journey. But Jesse Palmer has them back at the mansion, all the dudes. And what does Jesse tell the guys? He's kind of like, What's up, guys? It's a new day today. But let me tell you, girls are cracking down. They're not playing. Yeah. He gets them all the way together and lets them know, like, the girls is not here for the okie doke. They are here to find true love. He even said they're not here for a fling. So he gives them a recap of what they should expect for the week which is dates. Rachel will have a date, a one-on-one. -on -one. Gabby will have a one-on-one, -on -one, and then there will be a big group date. So they get handed a card, and the first name is picked uh, for Rachel's date. Who is the guy she picks? Zach. She picks Zach, okay. So uh, they go on their date, um, and they're met by some dude, I'll put his picture here from Queer Eye. I don't watch that show, we don't watch that show. Some dude who helps to plan their date, they pop champagne, and they get the red carpet treatment. They get cameras flashing and their names called, and they go into a empty theater. And the curtain rises up, and they see Rachel on the screen as a little girl, and they realize that oh, this is literally about me and you. Yeah, because that's what it was called. So they're watching that. Meanwhile, back at the mansion. Gabby decides, let me go hang out with these dudes and get to know them. She's, she went in there to like kind of hang out with them and have spend some more time with them since she doesn't really get to spend time with all of them. Like, you know, the one-on-one -on -one dates and stuff. She goes in there and she's like, so this is what you guys do all day? Like sit around and talk? And they're just like, yeah, this is all we do. Then I think they started throwing a football or something and how somehow she gets incorporated and then she quickly gets annoyed because she had mentioned something about these guys aren't into me or they're not pursuing me or showing me that they like me. Nobody was even talking to her. They were just throwing the ball around and then she was like, no, I don't want to play anymore. As a matter of fact, I didn't even want to play from the, first, from the beginning. And I was just like, well, okay. Okay. And then she left. She jumped in the car and left. She cried a little bit in the confessional and she just felt like that the guys were being wishy-washy. Which, to their defense, they were there with two bachelorettes. It wasn't like it was just her. Some of those guys are still on the fence about who they like. Some already had their minds made up. So anyway, let me hear you. Okay, so they're watching their video of themselves. His mom pops on and talks about how she hopes that he finds his forever love and yada yada yada. And Rachel kind of gets emotional watching him watch his mom. And then they get to talking and um, somehow they end up talking about their dads. And he explains that him and his dad used to go to the airport, park in the airport and just watch planes take off. Because um, his dad has a love for um, airplanes because he's a pilot, I guess. And then she talks about how she did the same thing with her dad, her dad and they kind of bond over that. And of course they kiss. They, the letter gets dropped off at the house for Gabby's date. Goes on the date with Eric, and well, her note says something about three being a crowd, and they thought that maybe it was going to be another guy that got to join them, and I thought so too. But then in comes Grandpa John. Kind of weird to me to take your grandpa on your first date with a guy. They jumped in the jeep and they took off, and they went to the sound thing. What was that thing called? I don't even know. It was. That was, it was a, for like relaxation. Yeah, I think it's called a sound bath. And they went to go like burn sage and stuff and, and do the boom around the thing. Yeah. I heard that's not good. So. 
Well, next part of their date, they go bowling. And they found uh, somebody to bowl with Grandpa John. Um, so they, some lady named Julie, some random chick in the bowling alley <laughs> to be on his team. And they bowl. And it seems like they're having a good time, even though it's super random that they have these two old people with them. You didn't think it was random? Fast forward, they hit the dinner table and um, they start discussing like their childhood and their parents and like what they want in their relationship. And Eric describes his parents being like the perfect team, how his mom is super hardworking, his dad is like the life of the party, um, and that they're just perfect and they've been married or like perfect for one another, like soulmates and been married for a super long time. And that's what he said he really is striving to emulate too. And then she decides to talk about, she's a daddy's girl, but because she just didn't have a supportive mother or something like that, um, her mom wasn't was there for her life, but like once she moved out the house, her mom was kind of like, I did what I was supposed to do. Now you, like, you know how some moms are like, once my child is 18, they gotta move. That's basically how her mom was and was just wasn't involved in her life anymore. And it, yeah, super, but yeah, they talk about that and she cries and she walks off and talks to the producer about how it's so hard and she's very emotional, but I think she's just scarred. She probably should have went to therapy um, after Clayton. I feel like that she probably should have went to therapy after Clayton because it just was a pile of emotion from both of them. And then they all get together for a photo shoot, super stupid to me but I don't know I don't know they were in these wedding dresses they ripped the bottoms off the guys come out give them hugs and all that stuff and then they get assigned outfits like there's Quincy whose cheeks were out in the back because he was in a hospital gown Jacob had no clothes on which he never seems to have clothes on some of the guys were like car washers you see like ladies car washing music videos and they have like proposals set up like like gabby and Two rachel guys for each girl yeah like rachel got tino right and logan and rachel had um i don't remember who proposed she to her first nate yeah but didn't somebody else propose to her too oh he wasn't that memorable yeah. it don't even matter um so but nate's proposal was obviously the best it was a one because he it was so heartfelt like he's like when you walk in the room the world oh, melts away, away. Like, okay. yeah and he was just like what you meant like yeah so and then they later on went to like the the football stadium in la where the rams and the chargers play and they had like another group date but they kind of branched off with the guys and i think avon and Rachel were in the middle of the field. And he told her that he was he was into her. Abby was not having the best of luck with her one-on-one -on -one time with the guys because she kind of was getting kicked to the curb back to back to back. It probably was editing that did that because I'm like, I don't know if it was really like that. If it was just like boom, 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 you know? But editing probably put it together, meshed it up to make it look like that. But whatever the case, um, Taylor came and talked to her. Super sweet though. He he just he just explained that he felt like that his 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 connection was more towards Rachel. And then Hayden comes and he kind of tries to do the same thing, but his word choices was whack. He uh what did he say to her? She was rough around the edges. And then here comes Jacob. He decided to tell her the, the same thing, but and like the worst way. And he was just like, you know, cool basically. But then he told her that he was like, yeah, to be honest, if you were just the only person here, I would have left, I would have left or something like that. He told her like he would have been gone or something. So it was like, that was totally unnecessary to tell her that, like that. And then he was like, we're here to make effing connections to find the love of our lives and yada, yada, yada. And he was like, but you're smoking hot. Like, her brother was off the grid. I don't think it's wrong for them to tell their intentions, but it's just like you don't have to be so like. like yeah. Why you gotta be so rude? 
All he was trying to do was marry that man's daughter. Maybe I'm gonna marry her anyway. Marry that girl, no matter what you say. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so um, both girls end up going back to meet all the guys that are all sitting around because they have roses to give out. So earlier they gave a rose out to Eric and they gave out one to uh, Zach, but then they have another rose to give out for the group date. And Rachel gives her rose to Aiden. Abby goes to give her rose and she picks up her rose and she just explains that she's not giving out a rose, basically. Like, the night was just not, she wasn't here for it and some of the guys' um, communication with her sucked. And so she decided that she just didn't feel like giving out a rose. Me personally, I think she should have gave it to Nate. Me personally. Yeah. Anyway. She could have gave it to Nate. Um, I mean, but, yeah. But she didn't. And so they left and the guys was like, what? What's going on? It was kind of a little, you well, know, shocked. And even even Rachel was shocked. The way her face, she I'm going to put like, a picture here. Yeah, she was like, what's going on? Because she, Gabby didn't tell her that she wasn't doing that. And she, she just. She was like, yeah, I, she was like, I don't think I should give out a rose. Yeah, I think we should do. And I was like, oh, she just left. Savage. And then that's when Jesse Palmer comes in. Big dog, big homie. And he's like, the girls is not here for it. There will be no cocktail party. Like, none. So that's what happened. And uh, the big bomb was the fact that the girls had decided that they were going to split off to have what they say, their own journey. And Rachel goes first and she picks Tino. Tino. She picks Tino and of course he takes her rose. And Gabby, I don't know who she picked first. Nate. Nate. Yeah, <laughs> the big homie. She picked Nate first and of course he took her rose. And then they kept kind of going back and forth, but then there was a guy that got called up for Rachel, Tremaine, who we really he don't no know. CT at all. He gets no air time. We don't see him. We didn't even know he existed until last week's rose ceremony when they called his name, which I get because there was a whole bunch of dudes, but we don't see Tremaine, 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 whatever that man's name is. She said she wanted to give him her rose, but he was like, Nah, I'm cool on that. <laughs> he said it in a much nicer way. He basically was like he wanted to kick it with Gabby because he felt the connection. And then Rachel, in her confession, was like, but I didn't even know they had a connection. Like, and we didn't either because we didn't. We don't know who Jermaine is. We do not know. We don't know that. But anyway, so he goes back in line because that's what Jesse Palmer said that he needed to do to see if Gabby would then give him a rose. But he took Rachel's rose. And I was like, dang, she can't even give it to nobody else. And so then Gabby picks a guy. I think she picked Johnny. He took the rose. I didn't know that Johnny and Gabby had it like that, but apparently they did. Because she was like, girl, no, he's here for Gabby. Yeah. And so then Rachel calls down, um, is it Alec? Yes. And she offers him a rose, and he's like, I'm cool on that. I want to be with Gabby. And so the same thing, Jesse Palmer comes out, takes her rose, makes him go get back in line. And he has to wait and see if Gabby will choose him. Gabby cho chooses her next guy. He accepts the rose. So um, she called down Meatball, James. And he declined the rose too and was like, I want to be on Gabby's side. And so then they left because they were just like, wait a minute, pause for the calls. And they went to talk to each other and um, gathered themselves and came back out. And then they had their final roses to hand out. Rachel does her final rose and she calls Hayden. But anyway, so she picks Hayden. So Jacob nor Tyler got to go on because they didn't, which I'm happy that Jacob didn't stay. Yeah. And for some reason he just never had clothes on and it's not that serious, bro. Put your clothes on. And um, then Gabby picks her final, and then she picks this dude named Michael. Where'd he come from? We don't know where he came from. So Tremaine had to go home, and Alec had to go home, and Meatball had to go home. And then they cut to the promos for next week's episode, or the, the rest of the season. I guess they're in pairs, and they're split off into their own little journeys. 
and it looks like it's gonna be some drama, of course. But then they come back into the credits because the show's getting ready to go off, and then you see James the Meatball pull Rachel to the side to tell her what that he made a mistake, and that after he said that he was here for there for Gabby, he instantly regretted. But I honestly think it was because he just wanted to stay on the show. All right, you guys. So that is it for today's recap. Be with us next week as we go over episode four of this train wreck of Double Bachelorette. I don't even know why they did this to these girls. I think they should have gotten their own season because it is hard. So, and I'm assuming it's going to get harder. But be sure to subscribe. Bang that bell so next time we come on, you will know for the Beauties and Bonnets. And also for just our regular content with the rest of the fam bam. Um, and like and comment and share and all of that. And we will see you guys next time.